Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Today Google released Android 15 developer preview 2 and I have it here on my Pixel 8 Pro to show you each and every new change. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the build number as usual. It's ap 31240223016a 3 and keep in mind that there is no OTA images available for this build and for you to install it you have to wipe the phone and install the factory image of Android 15. And this is happening due to a technical issue that Google didn't fix yet and now let's take a look at the new features. Most of the new changes in this update are under the hood so I won't notice a big difference between DP1 and DP2 but I also spotted some minor tweaks. The first one is under internet and then network preferences. Now we have a toggle to allow WEP networks or not. It says here WEP is an older security protocol that's less secure. So if you want to connect to this kind of networks, you can turn the toggle on or you can improve your security by turning off the switch. The second change is under the Bluetooth settings. Now we have a new option called audio sharing and the description says let others listen to your media along with you using their own compatible headphones which means you can connect multiple headphones on the same device to listen to the same content with your friend or partner which is a nice feature similar to the one we have on Apple devices but unfortunately it doesn't work for now because I tried it with multiple headphones and I couldn't do anything but when you tap on play a test sound it only plays the sound on the Bluetooth device currently connected to your phone but it doesn't detect any other devices and the stream settings section is completely blank. I also tried to connect multiple he headphones on my Pixel 8 Pro and the feature is still not working. So I'm not sure if it requires a specific type of headphones or maybe Google is still working on the feature and we will see it fully functional in the future. The third change is also under settings and then notifications and then do not disturb, then schedules. When you tap on add more, you will see new icons for the event and time options. I also noticed that the suggestions bubble that you get inside the camera app when you try to scan a QR code or a document is now much bigger for easier tapping. Maybe this new change is related to the camera app, but I only got it after installing Android 15 DP2. Change number four, when you go to the app info page under settings, now you have the option to archive apps which will simply delete the app files and only keep the app data. So if you want to save some space without losing your progress, this is the best option. And when you tap on it, the archive button will change into restore. And when you go to the home screen, you will see the archive icon on top of the app icon. Once you tap on the app, it will automatically re-download it from Google Play Store. And once done, you will be able to start using your app normally. And because of this new change, when you go to the app info page, you will notice that the open button that used to be here is now located at the top right corner. Change number five, when you connect your phone to a PC and then access the USB preferences menu, when you make any change here, you have to do a biometric authentication, which is better for your security. Not only this, but when you use your phone as a webcam and then access the webcam settings from the notifications, now we have a new HD option at the bottom left corner, which enhances the image quality. And I can see the difference from my initial testing. Not only this, but when you set it as HD or non-HD, it will save your preference for future use. Another change under settings, when you go to system and then developer options and scroll down a bit, you will see a new toggle here called disable default frame rate for games. And the description says disable limiting the maximum frame rate for games at 60 FPS, which will give you more flexibility to play games at higher frame rates. Now let's talk about the hidden features in Android 15 DP2 and I will use 9 to 5 Google article for reference. The first feature is called auto connected to satellite. The description says you can send and receive messages without a mobile or Wi-Fi network. You can open messages to activate the feature or learn more about how it works. Uh, it doesn't mention anything about the availability of this feature, what countries are supported, but I will leave the article in the description if you want to know more. The second change is related to the NFC tap and pay experience. On supported devices, apps can request the NFC adapter to enter the observe mode where the device will listen but not respond to NFC readers. So this will prepare the device before any interaction using the NFC reader and that will enhance the experience and make it more seamless and reliable. The third change apps can now declare that they are able to run on the small cover screens of flippables or foldables 
and this will give the users a heads up before using the app. In terms of security, Android 15 will let apps detect when they are being screen recorded and in turn inform users to enhance the security. Google is also giving developers more information about application launches, including whether it started from a cold, warm, or hot state. They can also find out if their app was started from a broadcast, a content provider, a job, a backup, boot complete, an alarm, or an activity. Android 15 will give developers more detailed app size information like the APK file splits, AOT, and speed up related code, DEX metadata libraries, and guided profiles. There is a new media processing foreground service to perform time consuming operations on media assets like converting media to different formats. Support for the CTA2075 loudness standard will help you avoid audio loudness inconsistencies and ensure users don't have to consistently adjust volume when switching between content. In other words, the system leverages known characteristics of the output devices like the headphones or speakers, along with the loudness metadata available in the AAC audio content to intelligently adjust the audio loudness and dynamic range compression levels. Android 15 will provide more options for apps that customize the Do Not Disturb rules. The PDF renderer APIs will get some improvements that will allow apps to incorporate rendering password protected files, annotations, form editing, search, selection with copy, and other advanced features, in addition to some optimization enhancements that will speed up the viewing process of PDF files. Last but not least, Android 15 allows developers to control HDR headroom when both SDR and HDR content appear. So for example, when you play a HDR video on the screen, you notice a massive difference between the video brightness and the other content on the same screen. So now developers can play around with this ratio to give you a better experience. Now let's talk about my experience with this build. Right off the bat, it's not recommended for your daily driver for two reasons. First, you have to wipe your phone to uninstall it. And secondly, it's full of bugs. But the most annoying one is this window that keeps showing on my screen. It says Android system intelligence keeps stopping and I have to close the app or tap somewhere on the screen to dismiss it, which happens a lot. And it doesn't only happen with the Android system intelligence. Sometimes it happens with Google Play Store, Google Play services. So it's not recommended to uninstall it because you will face a lot of issues. When it comes to performance and battery, it's a bit sluggish, especially while scrolling. And sometimes apps take longer than expected to start and you might need to force quit the app and open it again. But the battery life seems to be as good as normal without any thermal issues, which is the only good thing about this build. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes in Android 15 Developer Preview 2. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.